Howdy, so for fluid science, looking at changing reaction rate again. So you still need to be able to determine the effect of varying conditions on the rate of reaction using experimental data and predict and explain the effect that changes in conditions have on reactions in terms of frequency of collisions, orientation and energy. We're going to focus today on uh, changes in temperatures, catalysts and uh, using light to change the rate of reaction. So we're going to start by looking at how temperature affects rate of reaction. Uh, we're going to use the thiosulfate reaction again. So sodium thiosulfate reacts with hydrochloric acid. It produces solid sulfur which precipitates out of the reaction and how long it takes for the amount of sulfur to be generated that blocks out your vision of the cross um, in a conical flask as you look from above can be used as a proxy for reaction rate. So uh, this time we're going to change the temperature of the reaction mix before we add the acid and then we're going to time how long it takes for the cross to become obscured. I've got some videos that show this and thanks to Reese Lewis from Adelaide High School for letting me use these videos. So this one's at 25 degrees, um, we put our cross down using a petri dish instead of a conical flask, the petri dish has the thiosulfate. We add in the acid and we start our timer and we're seeing how long it takes for the cross to become obscured. We're up to 80 seconds and it's 110, so it takes 110 seconds at 25 degrees. Now we have a look at 50 degrees. So again we've got our cross, left our petri dish on at our acid, so this time the reaction mixture, the thiosulfate, has been heated up to 50 degrees. Looking at our time, and it's obscured in 30 seconds. So it's much faster when the temperature is higher, and we'll see why that is in a second. So uh, here we're looking at some experimental data, so the concentration stays the same, but the temperature is changing, so we're increasing the temperature. And we see the time taken for the reaction to uh, cross obscure the cross uh, reduces as the temperature increases. You can figure out the rate by doing 1 divided by the time. You'll see the other video on uh, changing rate of reaction if you want to see how to do that. So just do uh, 1 divided by 230 and that will give you your number to use there for the rate. So let's have a look at our results graphs. So our first one we're looking at temperature versus time. So as we increase the temperature we can see the time taken for the cross to obscure decreases. We have a look at temperature versus rate. As the temperature increases the rate of reaction increases. So why does that happen? The explanation is down to uh, collision theory again. So in collision theory, to have a successful collision, the particles need to collide um, in the right direction and orientation and with the correct energy. If they don't have the correct energy, then you don't break the bonds and then you don't get the reaction occurring. So by increasing the temperature, you're increasing the average energy of all the particles. So that means you're going to get more collisions because it's going to move around more. And also those collisions are going to be more energetic. So the chances that your molecules are going to hit each other with the right energy increases when you increase the temperature, as more particles will have the required energy for the reaction to start off. Let's talk about catalysts. So a catalyst is a chemical which changes the rate of a reaction. There's positive and negative catalysts. Positive catalysts speed up the reaction. Negative catalysts reduce uh, the speed of reaction. Um, we're going to focus on the ones that speed up reactions. Um, the way catalysts work is they provide an alternate energy pathway with reduced energy requirements. So that means, in terms of a positive catalyst, um, you don't need to provide as much activation energy or energy for the particles for the reaction to occur. So um, particular catalysts are specific to particular reactions. So if you want to make uh, ammonia in the harbour process, you use a finely divided iron catalyst. Um, you couldn't use vanadium oxide to do that. Um, iron speeds up that reaction. Vanadium oxide speeds up the reaction of sulphur dioxide to sulphur trioxide. So if you tried to switch these around, it wouldn't work. So uh, catalysts are usually specific to particular reactions. Um, enzymes are biological catalysts, so they're proteins that have a particular shape um, and they're used uh, all over the place. So wine, beer making, cheese making, uh, proving bread dough, tenderizing meat and also most of the chemical reactions that are occurring in your body are catalyzed by enzymes. So they're very um, important. Because they're biological they're affected by things like temperature and pH and we'll have a look at how temperature and pH affect them in another video. So if we look at our uh, energy profile diagram the enzyme here, we can see it reduces the energy required for the reaction to occur. If you don't have the enzyme, then you require a lot more activation energy. Enzymes have a particular shape, um, and that shape um, allows reactants to um, interact at the enzyme at that site, which is called the active site. Um, in biology, they call reactants the substrates. So the substrates reactants are the same thing. 
So the substrates, they interact at the surface of the enzyme. The enzyme changes shape slightly and forces uh, particular bonds to either be produced or broken. And then you end up with a product that's being produced. So why does this reduce the activation energy? The reason is the enzyme is providing the correct orientation. So remember in collision theory, the reactants need to collide with the right amount of energy, but they also need to collide in the uh, right orientation. So in this case, uh, the enzyme is providing the right orientation for the bonds to be produced or broken. So because you're providing the correct orientation, you don't need to provide as much energy because the chances of the uh, reaction occurring are quite high because they're interacting at the surface at that active site. Um, so light can also provide the energy required for a reaction to start off and to increase the reaction rate. Um, light is a type of energy, so if you provide light, particularly high energy light like UV light to a reaction, um, you can speed it up. And there's specific reactions that this works for. So photosynthesis, so that's where plants use light energy to turn carbon dioxide and water into sugar. That goes faster on a bright day compared to a dull day. There's more light to increase the reaction rate. Um, photography in the old days, before digital cameras at least, was based on uh, exposing light to film and also photographic paper. That was down to a reaction uh, that included silver bromide. So when the light hit the paper or the film, that changed the structure of the silver bromide and we had a reaction happening. Uh, this is the first photograph ever taken down here. Um, also, uh, some mixtures can explode if they're exposed to bright light. So down here in this bottle, we've got hydrogen and chlorine uh, together in a bottle. And we'll press play and we'll see what happens when we expose it to bright light. So here comes in the light, just bringing it close to the bottle with the gas mixture. And there's your reaction. So let's look at some questions. So this question says, an increase in temperature alters the rate of production of glucose by enzyme catalyzed hydrolysis. Explain why a small increase in temperature causes the rate of production of glucose to increase. So if you're increasing the temperature, you're increasing the uh, energy of the particles that are in your mixture. If you're increasing the energy of the particles when they collide, more of the particles are more likely to have the required energy to start off the reaction. So by increasing the temperature, you're increasing the number of particles with the right amount of energy for the reaction to occur, and that will increase the rate of reaction. The next question is about production of polyethene. I already answered the high pressure part of it um, in a separate video, and I'll put the link down here. The second part of that question I didn't answer in the other video, so I'll answer it now. It says, state one disadvantage of using high pressure. High pressure requires energy. So to increase the pressure of a gaseous system, you need to put energy in, and that can be quite costly. Um, it also can be dangerous. So having high pressure gases in sealed um, containers, if those seals blow, then you can have explosions. So it can be quite dangerous for the employees. Um, down here it says, state what advantage the of the manufacturer of using a catalyst in that process. So by using a catalyst, you provide an alternate energy pathway uh, with reduced energy requirements. So what that means is uh, more particles will already have the required activation energy as long as they're um, interacting with the catalyst. So you might not need to heat up the gas as much in order to get the reaction to occur. You might not need to have as much pressure, and again, that will save money in terms of costs. So by using a catalyst, um, you can reduce the required activation energy and therefore reduce costs in terms of heating or pressure. Um, another advantage of a catalyst is you only pay for it once. It doesn't get used up in the reaction, so it's a one-time expense that will increase your reaction rate for you, and you don't have to worry about uh, spending as much money on heating or increasing the pressure. So today on Flipping Science, we looked at how temperature, catalysts, enzymes, and light can change the rate of reactions. That's it for Flipping Science today. See ya.